Hey guys, I'm down here. This is going to be my chapter review to Nanatsu no Taizai. Nanatsu no Taizai, or The Seven Deadly Sins 336, The Lord of Chaos. Now, a quick PSA, I think is what it's referred to as. Manga Stream has been shut down, possibly by Shueisha, I think, maybe. Uh, so that means no more One Piece, no more My Hero, no no Shonen and no Taizai through Manga Stream will be released again, at least for the foreseeable future. J Minis Box or J Minis Box, however you pronounce it, uh, have stopped translating One Piece, My Hero. I don't think they ever really translated Taizai. So these main two translation sites um, have stopped translating our favorite series, which were released on either like Tuesday, Wednesday for Taizai, and Friday for uh, One Piece and My Hero, the Shonen Jump stuff. So. We gotta find other places to read these things. Manga Plus is the official place where you can go and you can read uh, the latest chapter for free. Uh, so that's something like One Piece. That's my hero. Not Taizai though. I don't, I don't think, which is unfortunate. Uh, the translations will be less passionate, so you won't have swears and stuff in there. You have Zoro instead. You'll have Zolo instead of Zoro actually. Uh, things like that. But actually, everybody's been um, translating One Piece nine six six. I think it is. Uh, for the last few days, and I'm, I'm just like, how did you translate it? I don't, I don't have it released in this country yet. I don't, I haven't seen it yet. So maybe it's something on Mangadex, but Mangadex asked me to like make an account and some shit. So I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. So let me know where where you guys are reading One Piece early, because I haven't, I haven't seen shit about One Piece, and I have no access to it apart from Manga Plus. So let me know. Anyway, this Taizai chapter, it's a little bit late. Same thing with One One Punch Man, but I'm gonna get through them. So, <clears throat> we start off with Arthur. He's in pain, and all Merlin really says to him is, don't be afraid, embrace it. It's time for you to awaken uh, immeasurable magic concealed within you. And he's just there like, the, the heck is going on? Both of his eyes black out. Merlin hasn't really said shit. You know what? A lot of this, like I said before, Nakaba seemed to want to, like Merlin was some sort of villain. I knew that she wasn't going to be evil. Um, but she. it's just, I, I really hate, parts of the stories like this where it's like a character who i understand she doesn't really tell people what she's gonna do but this is something where if i was a sin <clears throat> and i saw if i had someone like if i was gautha or if ban or uh, meliodas and i saw merlin doing this <clears throat> i would be very suspicious i'd be like the heck is going on and it's suspicious enough to probably like especially if i was gautha just one shot her and just be like, I right, we ain't we ain't testing this. We ain't going down that route. We don't want to see what you want to do. So for me, it's just a, a case of Merlin's being a real, and she knows that she's being a real high end, top quality creme de la creme bitch by not having communicated any of what she's doing here. She's just being a straight biatch. Uh, especially seeing as Arthur does not seem to be enjoying this. And the the other weird thing is that we have uh, Hawk Mama resonating with um with the transformation that Arthur's going through uh and she's just oinking she's like oink oink oh, and I was, <laughs> I was like what the fuck is this this is so weird but um yeah she seems to be resonating with it nothing actually happens to Hawk Mama uh anyway um as this is happening Merlin's just like when the king awakens he will release the seal on chaos chaos will return home to the king and I'm just like yeah cool I don't know I don't have any idea what chaos is Meliodas flies towards Arthur. Arthur recognizes him as, Oh, you're that Meliodas of the Demon Clan. I will never let B Britannia fall into your hands. Suddenly the sky blacks out, almost as if another demon has popped up. And I was like, yo, shit, who the hell could this be? Turns out it's not a demon. We'll get to that. The world just completely changes. Reality completely alters. We have two different kind of... We have this huge pavement on the left side with tree roots growing out of it, with eyeballs growing out of it. We have this huge bird just flying clouds beneath everyone, which is weird. We have the rest of, I think, Britannia and stuff that just has become like cuboidal and almost looks kind of flat earthish for all you uh, weirdos out there. And then we have everyone standing on like different planes of gravity. So you have Diane and Elizabeth stood on top of something. And then you have King and uh, who can fly actually and Hawk and Gatha who are standing on the side of something uh, but different planes of gravity all the while all of this stuff is being sucked in towards arthur and merlin 
and Meliodas is still there just, just flying we see this thing in the back with like a chin and nose it looks like uh, a lady by the lips and she her mouth is slightly open and the inside looks like an eye but then we then see this other lady wearing this gown with blacked out hair blacked out eyes I was just like yo this is trippy as shit we have a house with a huge muscly arm and just coming out of the bottom uh, Elizabeth and Merlin just like I mean, Elizabeth and Diana just like yo the Freak is going on. Hawk is shit in his pants. King is like, the heck is going on? Galther is like, I don't know where the captain or where Banner. Um, Diane is looking at him like, how the hell are you stood where you stood? So this is where uh, actually Hawk says something very poignant, which is what kind of crazy hallucin- whose halluc- hallucination is this? And Galther says, it's not a hallucination. This is reality. So I was like, yo. So what they've done is they've made Arthur have some sort of magical ability, which is so powerful that Every single sin is within this, um, within his magic, and they are they are quite frankly they they seem to be threatened. They're just like holy shit, where the hell are we? They they don't all go like max power like uh, Meliodas doesn't just assume his assault mode or anything like that. But they do all seem to be threatened. Like the heck is this? This he's actually changed reality into this weird thing that that starts to attack Meliodas. It starts going for Meliodas. So Meliodas is there looking for Merlin, he's like, what the heck's going on, did you do this, that house with the muscular arm has now a muscular body, and it tries to attack Meliodas with this, like, this flail-like uh, axe kind of thing, uh, only Barn saves Meliodas, so then they fight through these weird imaginings, these weird, well, these weird imaginings which are part of reality now, Meliodas does actually go demon mode, but he doesn't. Um, he doesn't unleash his assault mode, and he and Barn then attack the shit out of these things and destroying it. Meliodas is then being addressed by what he assumes is Arthur, who refers to him as Sir Meliodas. He gets hit by a die or a dice, depending on what the singular or the plural is. I think the singular is die, right? It's like a twelve-sided die or some shit. One, I, I don't know. I think it looks like a twelve-ish-sided one. Anyway, Meliodas gets hit by that. It doesn't really seem to phase him so much. Um, but then this Arthur says, "We met by the guiding hand of a momentous destiny. So what matters isn't what others think of think of you, but what you think of others." I have no idea what the frick that means. You guys probably have no idea what that means. I assume, unless you know, answer in the comments. What the hell is that even supposed to mean? So then we see Arthur in the darkness thinking about Meliodas and he's like, you know what, I used to look up to you. Why did you betray me? And this is where we see Merlin actually solve an issue. She's like, she goes up to Arthur, she's hugging him. She's like, yo, listen up. Meliodas did not betray you. Uh, That's a fact. Don't let your powers consume you. So she's talking him through this essentially. This is essentially um, the same thing as Naruto going through his uh, QB forms. You know, every time a tale was released when he was younger. This is basically... Um, someone coming into that psyche of his and just calming him down. That's what Merlin does. She calms him down. She's hugging him. She's like, calm down. Don't let your powers consume you. It's all good. Uh, and she's just smiling at him and he's there. You can see in her eyes, It's. I, I don't think it's, it, it's... It looks to be more of like a motherly type of affection than anything. Uh, I, I don't think she sees Arthur as, you know, that type of... Uh, that type of person. She doesn't want to get jiggy with him. Uh he's happy that she's there and all that good stuff and then reality returns to normal now what i'm concerned about here is have they just made arthur the like what that that wasn't him trying that was just him awakening and reality had changed that was the the bottom of the barrel of his um of his powers that was just him waking up in the morning and be like oh shit the reality has changed if my guy can do that in his sleep, you can see Gatha in the back sweating a little bit. You can see Hawk shit his pants. Everyone seems to be on edge. Even Ban, he's just there like, the heck this happened? Are they trying to suggest, is Nakaba trying to suggest that Arthur could put up, at, well, at least put up a fight against all the sins at the same damn time? He, a reality changing magic ability that he has. He, he can put up, he can at least threaten all seven well all six of the seven sins at the same time if that's the way he's going about this i really don't like that direction please just stop creating characters stop every mangaka out there stop creating characters 
who can solo every other character in the in the anime in the manga at the same damn time it's stupid and it's such a bad trope it's just like with Aizen for instance he could have just one manned everyone apart from when Ichigo went freaking into Mugets or whatever it was when he fused with Zangets and at that point Ichigo could have one man it pretty was soloed everyone in the verse at that point so it's just like stop doing shit like that you can't just have well you obviously can but it's not a wise idea to have one character who can just solo the strongest uh group of characters at all at the same damn time and expect that to be a good story to, uh, you know a good story to be told because then you have to have a villain that's at least equal to that right so then you make the sins redundant essentially so and i'm just like it's just not i don't i don't like having that one character who can do everything that needs to be done you know as soon as he pops up in one punch man that's the joke right saitama jumps in he has no idea what's going on but he can solo everyone in the verse that's the point but we get to see the struggles of the s class at the moment and stuff like that who can't solo everyone who will struggle to fight against the dragon level uh, monsters and stuff like that but in this it's just like yeah Meliodas can solo everyone no actually now Ban can solo Escanul can solo everyone stop having characters like that stop it if there's two on one make it difficult for that one you know it's just like come on I do not enjoy that ever so Meliodas is just there like uh, he thinks that was Arthur's magic M Merlin's there convincing Arthur that you know Meliodas is actually part of their crew as proof Elizabeth and the Sins are all here with him uh, they wouldn't be siding with a traitor, you know. So Arthur then just goes through the, you know, he's just like, oh shit, that was the mistake of a lifetime. A lifetime, I apologize. Uh, Meliodas is like, no, you know what? I should be the one apologizing. I can see why you thought I was an enemy. Uh, but then he just looks over at Merlin and he's like, yo, what the frick did you actually do to our boy Arthur? What do you mean by chaos? So she explains here something really a, a weird concept in the sense of it's easy to understand, but it just hasn't shown its face ever in the manga. It's been hinted to and referred to as in like an individual, but this power source itself has never actually been mentioned, I don't think. So what she says is there's this thing called chaos, very creatively named after the mother of chaos and the king of chaos and the priestess and the princess of chaos and the freaking shit cleaner of chaos and all that stuff. I don't know, man. But chaos is an impure and pure and pure entity. So you see this kind of yin yangish kind of thing. You have light and you have dark. So it's an impure and pure entity of darkness that the demons feared. So a darkness so great that the demons feared, hence the darkness before we went into that reality altered. And a light so powerful that even the goddesses worshipped it. Uh, its power was so immense, or is so immense, it's believed that it's, with a single intention, it brought about this world and all the races from nothingness. So this chaos brought about everything. Does that mean it's sentient or did it, because it says with a single intention, if you have intent, you have sentience, right? I'm not sure. So apparently this chaos thing sh maybe should be sentient or some shit. Uh, apparently, it, well, it would have had to have included the demon lord and the supreme deity that they were created. And then we see a, a panel of Hawk Mama. And it says here, the wise men of antiqu antiquity call it the mother of chaos. Are they trying to suggest once again? I think there's been a lot of this kind of like jokey, kind of slashy, serious vibe that Hawk Mama might be this mother of chaos thing. But once again, we get a panel with Hawk Mama where it says, you know, the wise men of antiquity call this power source the mother of chaos, even though we just refer to it as chaos. So is it chaos or is it the mother of chaos? What the hell is the mother of chaos? Help me out. So Merlin then says, Arthur will be the one to command this chaos. And he's the king who will lead Britannia into a new world. Uh, Meliodas is rightfully pissed here. He's like, why would you awaken a power in Arthur that's both a blessing and a curse, that has both this light and this creativity and this darkness and this destruction, this reality-altering capability? What are you plotting? What are you trying to do? Why, do? why would you do something like that to Arthur? What is it? What's your end game? And he's there looking at her all pissed. And she's like, my wish? What's my wish? And then the lake... Apparently has a voice, and I assume it's the wh wh whoever Merlin was speaking to. This maybe the princess of darkness or, or prince, princess of chaos or some shit. And she says, "Allow me," or it says, "Allow me to answer on Merlin's behalf." Everyone's shocked, like, "Oh shit!" There's a voice down there. So now we're gonna get. It says, "I will tell you of the wish made by a single lonely witch, 
who wander the land in search of chaos. So now we're getting Merlin's backstory, and apparently it had something to do with um, her searching the lands for chaos, being drawn towards chaos, wanting to understand, figure out, and possibly utilize chaos. Now, <clears throat> for the most part, I'm not, I'm not against this chapter. It's just. It seems to be very confused. I'm not sure where the story is going from here. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what they're trying to make Arthur into. Is he is he supposed to be this new godlike figure? Is he supposed to stand above everyone else just because and this is the definition of an asshole, right? My guy is basically dead. He gets yeeted into this lake, kind of. And now he's come out and he's basically as powerful as poss possibly Meliodas, maybe more powerful than the sins. I don't know. We, we genuinely don't know that. But it's it's very concerning that even without trying, this is this these are just kind of unintentional, you know, unintentional bursts of power which re altered reality. That's how insanely powerful Arthur is at this point in time. Just because he awoke from his slumber reality was altered if that's what he can do in his freaking ah uh, yeah morning wood stay what's he gonna do at midday when he when he actually knows how to utilize this ability he's gonna be able to one shot all the freaking sins at the same damn time so i'm not sure what you're trying to do there nakaba in the sense of it, it just seems very like we don't you don't need to continuously escalate people's abilities or people's powers that's where you know, grouping up with people where matchups come and determine things. You don't need to have, uh, you know, for like for, for instance, the Demon King. He was like this godlike guy, this godlike demon, even though he was actually very shit. So if Meliodas couldn't beat him by his onesies, then get Meliodas and Eskino. If they can't do it, Meliodas, Eskino, and Burn. If they can't do it, involve King. You know, that's what the idea was behind the sins. But instead, you had Eskino kick the shit out of the Demon King. Burn could probably kick the shit out of the Demon King, and Meliodas was kicking the shit out of the Demon King. So. I really don't like having this one figure who's so powerful or meant to be so powerful and he's soloing everyone in the verse like what they're probably making Arthur into and I'm not a fan of that and I'm not a fan of when Meliodas can do that either. But let me know what you guys thought of the chapter. Let me know if you guys thought I was just chatting shit. Let me know where people are actually reading uh, One Piece. I, I need to know that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll see you guys possibly tomorrow when I should be popping out with one punch maybe even one piece uh but yeah i'll see you guys in a bit